Thank you for visiting ChristopherMedia.net. Judy was boring. Hello. Then Judy discovered Jumbacasino.com. It's my little escape. Now Judy's the life of the party. Oh, baby, mama's bringing home the bacon. Whoa, take it easy, Judy. <laughs> The Chumba Life is for everybody. So go to ChumbaCasino.com and play over a 100 casino-style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. Voidware prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Hello, it is Ryan, and I was on a flight the other day playing one of my favorite social spin slot games on ChumbaCasino.com. I looked over at the person sitting next to me, and you know what they were doing? They were also playing Chumba Casino. Coincidence? I think not. Everybody's loving having fun with it. Chumba Casino is home to hundreds of casino style games that you can play for free anytime, anywhere, even at 30,000 feet. So sign up now at ChumbaCasino.com to claim your free welcome bonus. That's ChumbaCasino.com and live the Chumba life. No purchase necessary. VTW. Void or prohibited by law. See terms and conditions 18 plus. With lucky landslots, you can get lucky just about anywhere. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today to... Has anyone seen the bride and groom? Sorry, sorry, we're here. We were getting lucky in the limo and we lost track of time. No, Lucky Land Casino, with cash prizes that add up quicker than a guest registry. In that case, I pronounce you lucky. Play for free at LuckyLandSlots.com. Daily bonuses are waiting. No purchase necessary. Void were prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Thank you for visiting ChristopherMedia.net. Welcome to Gen Exhausted. I'm Chris. I'm Rich. I'm Jess. And we're back. And there's strange things going on in New York City. Definitely some things causing some, uh, I guess, well, I guess sort of from what I've heard, some, some politically incorrect memes to be popping up online. There's, <laughs> there's a situation in New York City involving a synagogue and a tunnel, some turtles and some ooze. Or wait. <laughs> Wrong story. Wrong story. Gotcha. So what's going on with this tunnel in New York, Jess? Because it sounds um, like you were all over it. Rich was like, what's going on? I really was not. I wasn't all over it. I saw it kind of as it was breaking. Um, and I think it's because I was spending way too much time on TikTok that day. And the, someone was like, there was some, so not a live stream, but so, someone had it live or like had recordings of it as it was unfolding. I'm not really sure, but that's how I heard about it. So some people and were it, saying, yeah, exactly. No, some people were showing. Ah. It's different. Um, no. So there were tunnels underneath a synagogue and no one really knows why there's rumors. And that's all oh. that anyone is it connected really? to a pizza place. <laughs> We don't. I don't know that it was finished. I think they were still like digging the tunnel. Oh, because, well, did, because Epstein died and they couldn't get the orders to finish it, right? Yeah. <laughs> I, <laughs> there were things. There's pictures and such because, like I said, really very little at this point has come out about it. Um, but there were pictures taken inside of the tunnel of babies, like baby seats. Like high chairs and mattresses with blood stains on them. Those are the big pictures that are circulating right now. Uh, and no one, no one's saying anything else. Just showing those pictures and kind of letting people' imaginations run wild. I guess child labor. Yes, that's they're one making. Thing. The, they're making the children build their own tunnels to be trafficked right to Jeffrey Jeffrey Epstein's prison cell because it's in New York, right? Yes. I mean, if we're going hog wild, let's just, just keep going. Yeah, there, it's, yeah. I did see something funny related to it, and it was some guy who was on X talking, like, basically pleading with anyone to listen to him and said that he thought Jews were living under his apartment and that he could hear Yiddish. And he lives on a ground level floor in New York. And people are like, dude, you've lost your mind. And he's like, it's still happening. I hear Yiddish under my heart. Uh, is there a fucking synagogue in the basement of his building? Because it it's, was under it's it. New York. It could happen. It was it was under it. Oh. It went under it. Yeah. So this guy anyway. just think there's just an underground network of Jew. So I'd like to ask this gentleman. Okay. Let's say there are. 
What's going on? What are you afraid of? There's well, okay. There's down there being Jewish and free. Well, this happened before the tunnel story broke. He posted this last month. He was posting about hearing Yiddish coming from under his apartment and thought he was like going. He's like, I'm, I'm not crazy, but I'm hearing. I, I swear there are Jews living under my apartment. I'm on the ground level. So maybe now in all seriousness, was this guy living above the tunnel? Yeah. Okay. 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 All right. Okay. All right. Okay. Never mind. I was trying to be a smart ass and missed a fact. All right. So that was just funny to me. I just, I saw that. And I mean, it, it could be shit, you know, it could be, so, it could have been photoshopped for all I know. Oh, thank God he didn't do that when Kanye was doing his whole thing. That guy could have been fucked. That guy could have been screwed. <laughs> but yeah, that's. They really are for as big of a story as it was. And, like, it was all that was talked about, what, like, yesterday or the day before, I think. But it's just, there was a Jewish brawl. Nine people got arrested. They were pulling people out of the tunnels. People were refusing to leave the tunnels. Wait, there was a big Jew fight in the tunnel? Oh, yeah. What? You did not there's tell us video. about this. I just thought there there's, was a tunnel and a bunch of shit. There's video. <laughs> Wow. But yeah. So what? But okay, I'm gonna. I'm just gonna ask the big question: Why are all these Jews down there? And obviously, t t tunnel to a synagogue. Okay, there. But why are they in the tunnel? I get where the supply of Jews came from. Why are they in the tunnel? Yeah, no idea. That was loud. Huh. Hey man, if that poor guy on X two. If again, if he'd have done it when Kanye was doing, it, what if Kanye had been jumped in? See, see, that's my boy. Like right, like Kanye trying to get some backup. See, this guy hears it. There's a secret <laughs> army of Jews. And they're meeting in tunnels underneath New York City. Here, I'm going to send you this. It's a YouTube video, but it shows you, like, what was happening. This is what I was seeing. And then in the first, like, 30 seconds, you can see, like, the, this brawl situation. Was it just yarmulkes and beards flying everywhere? <laughs> the hat. Oh, I don't want to hear this dude's commentary. I want to see if you can just mute. You don't need the commentary. You can yeah, mute of, it. it. Of a bunch of. Where's the Jew brawl? Give it a second. Go to like second twelve is whenever it starts. All right. Whoa, what? It's like <laughs> right. it's like Jewish Fight Club. What the fuck is this? <laughs> yeah. What could this be? What that is? Uh, I mean, maybe. Is it, hey, we're starting a fight club. Well, you already broke. You already broke the rule. <laughs> you got found out, that, huh? I know, and no one is saying anything. Like it is being kept very quiet. Now, I, I don't know you know what to say after what I just saw. Like, what? <laughs> did you did you watch further into the video and see when the dude was literally crawling out of a sewer on a New York street? No. Hold on. Yeah. The <clears throat> Like, this shit looks like it's out of a movie with the fighting and all that. The bunch of cops standing around. Big Italian cop talking to a guy with yarmulke. Oh, shit. What? Why? That no one knows. That motherfucker just came out of the fucking... Huh. What's... I'm telling you. That's why That's why the meme that said Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I was like, yeah, okay, I get it now. All right. Well, what's, go what's going on? What? Hmm. Oh, he's talking about that guy too. No, uh, I just, in general, what what is this? I oh, what oh, is this? What, oh, is this the Jewish Jacks? Well, no, none of them. They were all clothed because there's a mandatory clothes check. At a uh, one minute forty three, it's the guy who posted. There are Jews living under my apartment. I hear them, and it's like they're digging or something. For the record, I live at ground level, and we do not have a basement. It was posted November seventh. <laughs> okay, well, I, it's breaking points, Crystal and Sager. Uh, their their network. They're posting about it. They're, they have videos about it. So yeah, okay. That that tells me that that like if it's being ignored by the mainstream media, then other I don't know what we call it alternative media sources. Uh, they're going to cover it. And you know what? The, you know the minute that any type of alternative media source covers anything, you can just dismiss it out of hand. So that's what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. It's going to be all anti-Semitism. This is all fueled by hatred. Somehow trans people will be involved. Yeah, same, same shit, different toilet. I bet there were trans people in the tunnels. Jewish trans people. Sure, why not? But yeah, no one, nobody knows. Nobody nobody has answers, but it happened. Uh, uh, and that's that. 
Well, no, probably not today's Saturday Night Live. But I feel, man, if I'm a writer for SNL, like that's a skit this week somehow. We're making fun of that. <laughs> Are they allowed to though? No, not anymore. Yeah. They, you, yeah. they used to pick on everybody. They only pick on, uh, yeah, you, non-Jewish you know. white people. You know, you know, it goes. Everyone's on a team now. Anyway. By the way, I just want I just want to say I find it hilarious because this was a couple of years ago that I brought this up on the on the podcast. How they're trying to like maneuver and divide people up. Like, hey, if you're Irish, if you're of Irish descent, you're not white. And I'm just like, how much more fucking white do we gotta be, motherfucker? Yeah, you glow at the beach. I mean, yeah, it, it, it's just it's mind blowing, mind blowing. And I'm just like, okay, whatever. Just. Further bullshit, more more ways to divide us up, more ways to get people to to get people on the other side and 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 pump up those POC uh, numbers because we all know what that means. Not white. Yeah, like it's you're allowed to be white. Uh oh, no, we're done. That if the, the, uh, that, I should I stop really talking. Right? Yeah. No, but it's, it's, it's right. I don't recall being in the womb going male. Yes, white. Yes. Like, no. Do any of us recall? Jess, do you recall checking a box? Let's see. I'm going to pick female. And <laughs> you're, the most, you're the most non-white person on this podcast, but you're considered white because... Because I'm not fully... Because the wrong, you're, not, you're the wrong off-white color. Right. Like, you're not Latino. You're not Filipino. You're not... You know what I'm saying? Like, like, like no, nah, you, you could pass as white. And that's all it is. And that's... It's not about racial solidarity. It's about how others perceive you, and these people get caught. So many people get so caught up in how others perceive them that they lose themselves. And and it's just it's pretty pathetic. But I mean, you look around and you see it almost every day now. People looking for the most bullshit, arbitrary reasons to 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 be part of a group. Fucking Elizabeth Warren, right? Yeah, ex- With her exactly. One twenty fourth Cherokee ass or whatever she is. It's nonsense, dude. Absolute horseshit nonsense. Yeah, you know who used to do that? Kids. But I'm 158th Chippewa Indian. You're fucking seven. Shut up. I'm 110th Smekaho tribe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, oh. What was the one in Scrubs? I didn't know you were part Native American. You must be part of the Wait and See tribe. Oh, yeah, the Wait and See tribe. All right, so, I mean, like, okay. Uh, Jews crawling out of sewers in New York City. Tunnels under the fucking... City, sure. I, that sounds like something out of a Twilight Zone episode. Like it just doesn't even. Like, where do we even go with this? I mean, hopefully, we'll end up knowing more. I'm just stuck on what could that be? That's I. I can't get past waste of weed I'm smoking. What is that? I kind of wonder if it's just a situation <laughs> that the the answer is so right there in our face, and it's so fucking boring that nobody will think of it, which is just. It's probably a bunch of married Jewish guys who just want to have a place to hang out and not be around their wife and kids. <laughs> had, had to make a tunnel because yep. Jewish women like, it's are just, just it's so just fucking being, it's just like that. And no one will accept that. No one will accept that as the reason, even if it's fucking proven by on a 100% shadow of a doubt. Nope. Can't be that. Has to be something else. Has to be something more nefarious. But what's it's the like, first no, meeting? This is just, to- this is just how far men will go to get away from you bitches. That's just all it is. Sorry. What was the first meeting, too? Listen, you, we all know how our wives are. We're going to have to go underground if we wanted this to be any mm-hmm. successful. Everyone, go to Home Depot. Here's your list. This is what you get. You know, We're going to meet back here every fucking Monday until our fucking ultimate man cave is built. And then we're going to fight every week <laughs> and everyone dressed like you're going to temple when you come to fight that's what i don't get like yeah they're dressed up in the the hasidic oh, uniform yeah. oh they're dressed out. up like a stereotype absolutely so yeah good times good times <laughs> right so what were what was the other we had a couple other things what was um oh well this isn't on the fucking uh, agenda, but I, because of what we just talked about, I feel like it's a pretty good you know transition here. Have you guys seen this fucking Cat Williams interview with Shannon Sharp? I've heard about it. I've seen clips. Bro, flat out says Puffy wants is gay and was like offering like money in front of people to Cat Williams to either fuck him or suck his dick. And Cat Williams was like, I had to tell Puffy no in front of people. 
multiple times. And that surprises me about Cat Williams. <laughs> I love Cat Williams. I do too, but if you told me Cat Williams liked to suck a dick, I wouldn't be surprised. No, not even a little. Like I get it. Like he's very he's, he's small and effeminate. I'm just saying. I, I think it's the, it's that pimp thing. I, I like when you when you when he when he was doing like in Friday after next when he was doing his pimp thing. Every time I see pimps like that, I I just see I'm like, dude, you're half in drag as is. You talk about pimping long, since been pimping since been pimping. Yeah, with them long ass nails yeah. and shit, and I'm just like, bro. You you half a trans right now. So I don't I never understood how come the dude who looks most like a bitch is the most manly dude in the room. Why? Uh, black culture. I mean it ain't even it ain't even just limited to black culture because we can look at a whole lot of music in the eighties. They had a bunch of white people dressing up like bitches. And I was like, why? <laughs> like seriously. We're like we're not even talking about like the New York dolls where that was their fucking shtick. We're talking about Poison on the cover of their first album. Almost every dude I knew back in the 80s was like, yo, I'd fuck that one. And I'm like, yo, that was a guy. That's a dude, dude. yeah. <laughs> no, that, that album came out when I was like seven. I was like, why are those guys wearing makeup? Like, I knew what was going on. I'm just saying, the 80s brought out the real fucking in the closet down low folks. Man, I know some dudes who are like, hey, you seen that new bitch in Shalma? She finding them on the cover. <laughs> Mickey Free is not a girl. <laughs> Mickey Free is a man. <laughs> Mickey Free is a man. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, I hope all three of our listeners might have one or two new ones just for tonight. And if they are, you know who you guys are. Hi. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean, have you been. But, but I hope our three listeners get the joke. Because, yeah, yeah we're, we're, we're definitely fucking but Rich, dropping some fucking deep cuts on the. On the quotes tonight you definitely brought that have you been following any of this stuff that's been coming out about diddy it's all types of crazy man like i i don't know what to believe anymore i mean like none of it sounds implausible quite honestly with all the stuff that swirled around him for i mean shit everyone like that's it's ancient history now but we were we were in specs together remember that shit with him and, and j-lo and the gun and all that shit oh yeah shine went to prison for that for like a lot of years Homeboy lost his fucking career and a good chunk of his life over that shit. Got one song. And in it, he's talking about bad boy, bad boy, gangster, gangster shit. Then the shit happens and it's like, yo, guess what? You're taking the blame for this one. I'm puffy. I can't go to jail. But no, not only that, but you remember his fucking manservant? Farnsworth? Far yeah. I Apparently, this is something, I don't know. I, I, I guess I wasn't hanging out with enough black people back in around that period of time because it's something that most people that I see, like, in the black community, are like, oh, yeah, they were fucking. Everybody know Diddy Dunn been gay. And I'm like, what? Like, yeah, you didn't know that? I'm like, no. I mean, I, I would have believed asexual over gay, but, you know. I mean, but that's another guy who wouldn't surprise me. Hey, did he like sucking dick? I could see it. Like, he's not the most masculine man. He looks like he's probably a small dude in real life. And he, yeah, and he's, he's a fucking dancer, isn't he? Isn't that how he got famous? I have no I, I don't know. I like, didn't he start I do as not a give backup a dancer in hip hop videos? I, he is 5'10. Um, I'm looking up if he was a dancer. Well, see, and then there's like the other shit that he's saying. Like, uh, I watched a video of this where people went back and they went and they, they dug up clips to back up what he was saying about like Cedric the Entertainer stealing jokes and shit like that. It's like, to me, like, that's the biggest sin in comedy is openly stealing from another comedian and just yep. unabashedly fucking carrying it like that. Like, that ruined Carlos Mencia's career. And Cedric the Entertainer and Steve Harvey, like, apparently they hated Bernie Mac. And I'm like, well, I mean, no offense to those two, but... Bernie Mac was a way better fucking comedian than those two put together. So, but I mean, like I watched the videos, Cedric, the entertainer there, he is literally like almost word for word, ripping off other bits that were on this video that com that other comedians had done years prior to him doing it. And he had ample opportunity to see it. This isn't, I don't think this is a case. In some cases, I think there could be unconscious plagiarism. Like anybody who's ever wrote music, you'll 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 start writing something. You go, oh, that sounds good. Say, well, fuck, wait a minute, motherfucker, that ain't nothing but this. God yeah, damn it, I nah. just fuck. Yeah, fuck. You know, it's like so. I 
that does happen, but man, not for a whole career. You know what I'm saying? Like that's someone stealing shit. And the Steve Harvey stuff was basically just like, what? Steve Harvey wears a hairpiece? Okay. <laughs> like, I, don't get me wrong. I get it. Cat Williams, he's funny, blah, 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 and shit like that. But, like, the Diddy stuff, the joke stealing stuff, that's the real shit that I'm like, oh, okay. Like, the rest of it is just like, yeah, okay, so Steve Harvey it, it, he ripped off. Uh, well, no, no, he, that's the other thing he did. He said, uh, you remember the show Hanging with Mr. Cooper, Chris? With I Mark do. Mark Curry? Sure do. Okay. I never watched either Steve Harvey show or Hang on Mr. Cooper, but I'm aware of both shows. But even in that video that I was watching, they were like, this is the, the Hang on Mr. Cooper. This is Steve Harvey show. And I mean, like he, yeah, what Cat Williams said is true. It's like he took everything from that Hang on with Mr. Cooper Damn. and just you think Steve Harvey just lifted his career from Mark Curry. Exactly. I remember his I'm just name. Like, it tells you I watched it. It was him and Holly Robinson. And Vogue did the theme song. Oh, God! But, I mean, it was, it was right. I mean, that was right in, when I was that age. Like, right when my, my family watched TV on Friday nights. It was one of the things they dumped on us through those years. I remember Mark Curry from his stand-up. By the time Hang and Mr. Cooper come out, I, I, I knew him as a stand-up comedian. I, I didn't care to watch his show, so... But excuse me. No. Uh, so, yeah, that supposedly that fucking interview got something like it's over 32 million views in four days. It's quite a lot. I mean, that's that's got to be up there with like, you know, the best Joe Rogan episode fucking numbers. Right. Yeah. I mean, CNN. Or, fuck that. Any TV channel wishes 32 million. That's Super Bowl numbers at this point. Yeah. Yeah. Just thought, just thought I'd bring that up. But with that, that puffy thing, do you know anything about that? Uh that Chicago prosecutor, or what was it? I think her name was Kim Worthy or something. Or, wait, that might be a Detroit. Kim, Kim Worthy's our pro, yeah. No, there was, a, there was somebody in Chicago who used to be like in his crew or whatever and then was writing a book about him or something and uh, mysteriously just died of pneumonia while this book was being written and it never got finished. And I guess the word around the campfire is, oh yeah, Puffy had this bitch killed because she was gonna say, she was gonna say everything. Oh, I think her name yeah, is I haven't Kim. Heard anything like it's that. not worthy, but her name is Kim. Well, let me let me look this up. And yeah, by the way, I'm showing my age. I'm calling him Puffy, but I, I call him Puffy around people under thirty. They're like, who the fuck are you talking about? And I say Diddy. They're like, oh, yeah, he's had like fifteen different names. P Diddy. Apparently, he's not P Diddy anymore. It, well, it, first he was uh, Puff Kim, Daddy. It's Kim Porter. Okay, first he was Puff Daddy. Then he was Sean Puffy Combs. Then he was P. Diddy. And it's... Uh, mm. Dude, okay, you got like 15 fucking names, okay? We'll just call you one of them and just answer to it, all hey, right? This, he's always Puffy to me. Fuck uh, da, da, da. Yeah, let me see. Here, it's from the South China Morning Post, but well, whatever. I'll send it to you guys because it gets into the whole uh, what's up with Puffy and all the crazy shit with this dead ex-girlfriend of his. There you go. She's an ex-girlfriend. She was writing a tell-all book. She mysteriously died. And this happened recently? Well, it came up. 2018, age of 47 from low bar pneumonia. <laughs> But there's a whole uh, bunch of fishy shit with the medical examiners, like the uh, exam... Med uh, our coroner switched during the investigation of this. Uh, and the whole reason it came to light again is because Puffy on social media like wished her happy heavenly birthday or fucking whatever. And they're saying like he's just openly flaunting like, yeah, I fucking killed her. Okay. Here, all right. It's Combs, from the article you sent, Combs has been accused of sexual assault in four separate lawsuits over the last few weeks. The first was filed in November by Combs' ex-partner Cassie who allegedly he raped and sex trafficked during an abusive 10-year relationship. Okay, I got to ask this. What is sex trafficking? Because it seems like this is the new fucking thing that they're just throwing out there, and it just means basically uh, women in peril. It's just the catch. It's the new catch-all. Because right. sex trafficking mm -hmm. used to mean to me like someone's getting sold against their will, being fucked against their will. Now apparently it means someone posted a picture of you with your with with your ex girlfriend and your ex girlfriend doesn't like it, so you sex trafficked her. Like according if, if the, the bar Oxford, is that low, according to the Oxford Dictionary, the action or practice of illegally transporting people 
from one country or area to another for the purpose of sexual exploitation. Boom. Either way, she took she filed a lawsuit and took a big check a day later. So I mean, you can insinuate what you want from that on either side. <sighs> yeah, that was like a thing for a minute. I remember that. But Kim Porter had a long time bumpy relationship with Puffy until 2007. Uh, we went over the death. Uh, she's got three of his kids. She had three of his kids. Uh, he said a few days before she died, she said she had the flu and wasn't feeling well, so she sent the kids to his house. One night I was checking on her, and she was like, Puffy, take care of my babies. She actually said that to me before she died. Right there, right? Like, we learned that from COVID. Like, when anybody's quoted... It's generally bullshit, uh, especially if it's something right before they died. Yes. Like, my dad said something before he died. I can't tell you exactly what it was. I can tell you what it was about. It was about getting the fucking snowblower fixed for my mom that winter. But I couldn't tell you exactly what it was. I could fucking remember. But, yeah, like, really, like, especially, like, the mother of your children's about, whatever. Anyway, uh, da, 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 da. when Combs got the news, he said there was screaming and crying. Uh, da, 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 da. And now this goes into all of his sexual assaults. Alleged. Yeah. Alleged. Yeah. Allegedly, I should say that for legal purposes. Uh, here we go. What are the conspiracy theories around Kim Porter's death? And this is from the South China. What is it? News. So this is, I'm reading their article. Although the Los Angeles County Department... Of medical examiner coroner ruled Porter's cause of death lumbar pneumonia. Some fans have taken to platforms like Reddit to hypothesize conspiracy theories around her passing. Uh, da, da, da. It says read more, and now I can't read more because the article just stops, or it's just a terrible article. It doesn't even okay. It it, it just goes on to say that they were feuding again. Uh, okay. Look at the bottom. By the way, he did turn off his comments on when he did his social media post wishing her happy birthday. <laughs> That's not suspicious. Here's this one. Former bad boy artist claims Diddy wiretapped Kim Porter's phone and busted her nose. This is from Black Enterprise from December 3rd. So, you know, it's from my bookmarks. Oh, <laughs> I run okay, here we go. Uh Google Mark Curry, Diddy, and Kim Porter. Ironically, Rich, not the Mark Curry that we just brought up. It's rapper Mark Curry, a former bad boy artist, claims Sean Diddy Combs has a history of abusing women. Yeah, Mark Curry alleges that Puffy busted her nose. He wiretapped her phone. Curry claims Puffy would host parties where he'd provide separate bottles of alcohol for his female guests. And that women were instructed to drink from the bottles that were infused with a substance that made them, quote, real slippery, unquote. <laughs> 50 Cent making a documentary about Puffy. What? Kimora Simpson, or Kimora, Kimora Lee Simmons thinks her house fire was somehow connected to Puffy. Is this your first time dipping your toe into the, the black culture and their fucking uh, conspiracy theories? Because if it is, bro, we ain't got enough time. You're just going to have to fucking, you're going to have to revisit this on your own, dude. Because we're going to be here all goddamn day and night for the next five fucking months. Because that's how this shit is. Fair enough. Bro, when I lived in the hood, this started a fucking four-hour argument slash debate slash conversation. Did we land on the moon? Everybody in the hood had to come down to my porch and have their fucking say about it. And I'm just like, all right. <laughs> so I and, and boy, I learned that they think a lot of crazy shit, bro. And it's just like you know, like, oh yeah, like by, probably about half the people, black people you know, believe this. I'm like, oh, oh okay, fair enough. I was just, I, I was just trying to find the one that got into all the minutia of essentially, it, it, it looks like Puffy took this chick out. Like she was writing a book, some shit was gonna come out. Like the, there was, there was some shit with like, I guess I, I, I've said it all already there's some shit where the, the the initial medical examiner said one thing and uh it was contradictory to what puffy and then a new one came in and said no nope, uh it's, it's pneumonia just like they said like but i want to i want to find it all to substantiate it but like there's in the last month or so a lot of crazy shit has come out about puffy I guess. well people don't realize especially younger people that 
he went through a major image overhaul around the time with the gun incident and the Jennifer Lopez shit. And <clears throat> before that, <clears throat> he was more than happy to be rubbing elbows and be thought of as the, you know, uh, with, with with people who used to be in the game, however you want to put it. And he and he was more than happy to be thought of as the East Coast Shug Knight. But once that, that nightclub and gun incident happened, nope, he wanted to be, you know, your Uncle Puffy, your Uncle Diddy. <clears throat> yeah, now I'm on, now I'm hosting an MTV show. Yeah, now I'm in. Now I'm in. Get him to the Greek, and I'm talking about stroke the furry wall and shit. And this is what pussy looked like in the seventies, and everybody ha ha ha, everybody laugh, you know. And it's like, <clears throat> I like I get it, I understand it, but let's be honest here. If you come from a certain type of background, that's how you're just going to view the world, and you can do all the image makeover you want. It's just this. It's just a new coat of paint on the same shitty house. That's it. So I'm just saying, like in my experience, once the die is cast, it it it. It takes a damn near a miracle for a person to have a real fucking change. And <clears throat> I don't I don't put any of this past him. I mean, let's be honest. I how how many fucking decades has he milked notorious BIG's memory? Uh, we're going on two and a half. Mm -hmm. I mean, he ain't above that. No, I mean he cashed in immediately. I mean, so what? Biggie was shot in what? Ninety six yeah. Biggie was shot what? Junior year C ninety seven. Or 97, yeah. I mean... He, Tupac yeah, was 96. That's yeah. right. But I'm just trying to think. But, like, Biggie was shot in, like, fall, and then, like, by spring, that song was... Every, that summer, that song was everywhere. Oh, yeah. Like, he cashed in, like, right away. Or maybe Biggie was shot and it was everywhere in the fall. But you get, you get my drift. Like, three months later, it was everywhere. Like, that doesn't... It, you know? That doesn't seem like somebody who, like, was really grieving... Well, I'm just going to say Eric Clapton's son falls out of a fucking window. And two years later, he he's hired to do the soundtrack for a movie called Rush about undercover, undercover narcs in the 70s down south and shit. And he writes Tears in Heaven, not even really fucking thinking it's going to it's a, he done soundtracks for Martin Scorsese movies at that point. You know what I'm saying? Like, like he probably just wrote it and was like, OK, whatever. And it came out, and everyone's like, oh, it cashed in on his dead son. Look at this shit. It's like, I don't remember anyone saying shit about Puffy, and you are absolutely right, dude. That was less than one calendar year before that shit was MTV Video Awards, all that shit. Yeah. Yeah. So. Like, I remember even thinking, like, you know, back when I thought I was a artsy-fartsy musician, like, man, like, I get it, rap's a different kind of music, but that, that was kind of quick. You know? But what are you going to do? All right, so are we done with uh, yeah. the Puffy conspiracy yeah, portion, portion of the show tonight. Yeah. For uh, until next week. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank you for visiting ChristopherMedia.net. Okay, round two. Name something that's not boring. A laundry? Ooh, a book club. Computer solitaire. Huh? Ah, oh, sorry, we were looking for Chumba Casino. That's right. ChumbaCasino.com has over a hundred casino-style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. Ch -ch -ch -chumba. ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. Void were prohibited by law. Eighteen plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details. With the Lucky Land Slots, you can get lucky just about anywhere. This is your captain speaking. Uh, we've got clear runway and the weather's fine, but we're just going to circle up here a while and uh, get lucky. No, no, nothing like that. It's just these cash prizes add up quick. So I suggest you sit back, keep your tray table upright, and start getting lucky. Play for free at LuckyLandsLots.com. Are you feeling lucky? No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. With the Lucky Land Slots, you can get lucky just about anywhere. This is your captain speaking. Uh, we've got clear runway and the weather's fine, but we're just going to circle up here a while and uh, get lucky. No, no, nothing like that. It's just these cash prizes add up quick. So I suggest you sit back, keep your tray table upright, and start getting lucky. Play for free at LuckyLandSlots.com. Are you feeling lucky? No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Thank you for visiting ChristopherMedia.net. What do we have in the way of Biden? I think that was our one story that was sent to the chat this week, right? Oh, just uh, because, you know, uh, the, uh, the, the, the second day of infamy happened here over the weekend. What are we, what, what are we on? The, what would have been? The third anniversary? The 
third anniversary of January 6th. No, it's just what did he say in the speech? Uh, in the speech, he uh, remember right. Uh, like we're all in agreement on that day. I think we've all talked about this enough. We're all in agreement on that actual day. One person died, right? From actual things that happened. Yes. One per Ashley Babbitt, right? Yes. Yeah. Well, Biden in this speech is claiming nine people died. He's including the police suicides in that count, by the way. And then he goes on to rail about Trump rewriting history. <laughs> it's like you're you're just lying. You're now just doing it right in front of our face. Well, if they say it enough, it becomes true. Well, I mean, like, well, like when Mitch McConnell did the same thing uh, uh, with the fucking uh, Supreme Court shit. It's like, are you going to sit here and say the reverse of the shit you were saying four years ago and not even act like you didn't say it? I mean, if you want to. Well, it was a national story, but also kind of local. Uh, Jim Harbaugh on Monday night talking about they wanted to say it was tainted, but we showed them. It's like. Really? Come on. You just said that on TV? All right. But, you know, that might be treading into a different area. But, like, it's like, dude, you just, like, you just did the thing. You're railing against the other guy. Like, I, I, I don't even, like, why am I even shocked? Is it just because I have a human brain? Because, like, this is just shit we see all the time now. And my human brain still goes, that's ill. It's just because of how I'm wired goes, that's irrational. That's not logical. And I go, I know. Mm -hmm. I, I yeah, maybe I'm maybe I'm connecting dots. I shouldn't, but I'm just I don't. Uh, this isn't even just a political thing. This is just a this is just a society thing at this point. Yeah, I think people are getting true. very confused about what the reality of their life is versus what the reality they present to people via online. And I don't know. <clears throat> Y'all are both familiar with the Mandela effect, right? Mm -hmm. So I heard a conspiracy theory what that you i know i know crazy i somehow ended up on that side of I uh, social media am personally shocked <laughs> i heard a conspiracy theory though that maybe the mandela effect is just a bunch of like small truths or small not truths that are tiny little edits in history like the uh, Fruit of the Loom cornucopia. Have y'all heard that one? Apparently um, the Fruit of the Loom logo never had a cornucopia. I, wait a minute. I don't really recall when I wore the looms. I recall just four fruits. See, I always remembered the cornucopia. I didn't know what a cornucopia was called until the Mandela effect, just for the record. I don't know. They, they both look like I've seen them before. So the, the this person... Oh, no. I see it. I see it now. The old, okay, the old Fruit of the Loom? Yeah. Uh, it has some of the same coloring as the one with the cornucopia on there. And so I think that that is what... It's one of those no. things like when your mind fills in it's shit for you. I, yes, I do. But I also know that like Fruit of the Loom came out and said that there was none, there was none, there was none. And people have been going through and pulling out their old Fruit of the Loom clothes and posting pictures of them and be like, explain this then. Because there's no knockoff Fruit of the Loom. This isn't Gucci. Like no one, <laughs> no one's trying to get a, a fake Fruit of the Loom. Well, isn't the new, uh, isn't the, yeah, it's picking on your generation, Jess, but isn't the new millennial name for the Mandela effect wish casting? Uh, that must be younger than me. I've never heard that. Just saying shit that you wished happened and you say it so much that it, it eventually becomes, you, you, people think it was true. Well, see, that's, that's the whole thing with the Mandela effect is the conspiracy behind it was like, there's all these little things they're trying, like, like they're experimenting on us or that we are being, I don't know who they is. And I hate when people say that, but like. We are being experimented on uh, by someone or something to see how far they can switch reality in front of us and tell us, no, it was never like that. And, like, I kind of feel like that's what's happening on some level with the January 6th stuff. Because it's just said over and over and over and over and over. And, like, I obviously know that 9-11 was much worse than January 6th. But, like, there's whenever you think about January 6th, like whenever it crosses my mind, it it's categorized in some way, and I have to, like, 
consciously pull it out of that category of like, oh, that was a really bad day. No, 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 no. That's this is all. It wasn't fun, but this let's get it ca- away from the categories of yeah, like. See, no, the, 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 yeah, then maybe I'm fucked up because I've never, or maybe I, I don't know, paid attention in history class. My brain has never. It it does. It belongs nowhere near any of those dates it's mentioned by. No, why the the what marks, but what marks uh, all those dates is ma- the mass casualties, the massive loss of human life. One doesn't cut it in my book. I'm sorry, and you can try to trump it up. Fine, let's. I'll give you the n- nine. Don't count. I'm sorry, yeah. like this was not a mass casualty event. You cannot cl- you cannot classify it with December seventh and nine eleven. And whatever other fucking dates, uh, pre- or vice president word salad threw in there. Like I said, I pull it away from it every time, but like immediately, that's where my brain just puts it there because it's been said over and over and over and over and over and over and over. Like I think you know what I think is going to come when this finally comes to the Supreme Court. If any of the like, it's all going to come down to the phrase "fight like hell." That's what I think it's going to come down to. And if you can derive anything else from Fight Like Hell other than uh, organize and go violently stop uh, this event, then it's done. It's over. If you, can do, if you can take anything away from Fight Like Hell other than one meaning, it's done. Stop wasting everybody's time. Because that is such an ambiguous... I mean, and again, that is what the Trump is good at doing, stepping up to the line. Like, it is so ambiguous... Like, there's no direct order in there. There's no call to violence. Like, fight like... You're telling me someone who's had cancer has been never been told to fight like hell? Mm-hmm. And do we all forget Summer of Love 2.0? Yeah. And all the Democratic fucking politicians that decided that this was time to tell people to get in the streets and commit acts of, of civil disobedience. What was it? Maxine Waters? Violence <laughs> is the language of the unheard? That is a direct quote. I ain't making shit up there. That, to me, sounds more incendiary than fight like hell. Yeah. But what do I know? Yep. It's, uh, it's just it's the whole thing. It's, they're, they're trying to make sure the history, in my opinion, they're trying to make sure the history is written the way that they want it written. Because nine people did not die there. No, That's they did not. not. Did. No. One person died. What was it? One guy had a heart attack, and then a bunch of cops killed themselves, allegedly, over this. I'm not saying they allegedly killed themselves. They allegedly killed themselves over this. Yep, and that that is just... Those, those are the facts, and that can be found by anybody, but no one spends the time looking at this yeah, stuff anymore. There were not nine dead bodies laying there on the fucking steps of the Capitol after, in, on the afternoon of January the 6th. They're just, they're, there weren't, and it's intellectually dishonest if you say there were. Mm-hmm. And I'm sure, I'm guarantee you will get some kind of misinformation notice from one of the places this podcast is on because of this conversation. I fucking guarantee it. You're not allowed to talk about it. How dare you? How dare we? Well, speaking of shit you're not allowed to talk about, it just kind of could segue nicely into, uh, have you guys been following Jimmy Kimmel and Aaron Rodgers? The last I heard was Jimmy Kimmel's response to Aaron Rodgers. I haven't heard anything else from there. Well, let's start there. Like, you heard his response, right? Yes. He essentially went on this long rant and threatened uh, action in court. And if you watch the the Aaron Rodgers clip, he wasn't... It, it's. It's kind of what I was saying last week. He wasn't insinuating Kimmel was on the list. It, he was actually, they were joking around because if you go back, Jimmy Kimmel's been picking on him for four years uh, since during COVID uh, and, and all the stuff that, uh, you know, Aaron was, was doing regarding, you know, being uh, uh, really, you know, tight lipped regarding his immun- immunization status and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it, uh, basically, uh, Aaron Rodgers thinks Jimmy Kimmel is one of these people is pretty much thinks like this list doesn't exist, you know, and what he was insinuating is when this list comes out, like Jimmy Kimmel isn't going to be happy because something that he's been saying doesn't exist is going to show that it, you know, that it exists. 
That's what he's insinuating. Well, yeah, Jimmy Kimmel's response, I was just, after I read it, I'm just sitting there like, first of all, aren't you a comedian? Second of all, why are you being so butthurt about this? Like, that's, it, it, seemed, it seemed really thin-skinned to me for somebody whose job it is to lob grenades for a living. You figure every once in a while one of those grenades gets lobbed back at you. And there is plenty of video footage of Jimmy Kimmel picking on this guy for the last four years. And the other night, tease off on him, a podcast I listened to timed it for seven minutes. Basically, I mean, no, he's a comedian, basically insulting him. So all this started because Aaron Rodgers made a comment about Jimmy Kimmel still having a condom on his dick. On the Pat, uh, what it was it? What's that fucking show on ESPN, Pat McAfee? The Pat show? McAfee show? Pat McAfee, thank you. Oh, is this really where this all started from? <clears throat> that's what I heard. And I was like, wow, that's kind of out of left field. But if there's been a fucking four-year-long back and forth between Aaron Rodgers and Jimmy Kimmel with Jimmy Kimmel fucking taking shots at him via his late night show, yeah, Jimmy Kimmel then that makes total it. sense for him to take another fucking to take a shot like that at Jimmy Kimmel. And it, and Jimmy Kimmel's doing what shitty people do when they get caught. When they're fucking lobbing fucking insults and they're going, oh, they're just jokes. But then you say something that they don't like and, oh, it's shut it down. I'll, I'll take you to court, dude. Really? Really? Like, come on, yeah. man. And, like, and if you actually watch the, the clip, Aaron Rodgers is definitely saying it in a joking manner. He is not talking about, like, oh, it's going to be some shit. Jimmy Kimmel's going to be on this list. No, he's they're joking around and he says it in a joke. He says it. He's like, I have laughing when he says it. Right. Right. Just throwing his little jab out there. Yes. It's a guy giving another guy some shit. And like, uh, let's say Jimmy Kimmel, like uh, this guy from a respect meter, this guy in the last 10 years for me from like 100 to zero. What? What was Kimmel saying about Aaron Rodgers' vaccine status? Uh, it pretty much tells him that he uh, picking on. Essentially, I'm paraphrasing him, but what does the big dumb jock know about medicine? And I would argue the same thing as the fat, pudgy, middle aged comedian. Yeah, for, first of all, that's my first answer. What do you know? You're a fucking guy who makes fart jokes for a living. Like, what? What are your credentials? But also. I'm going to go to bet that the guy who's been a professional athlete and who's been playing a sport for fucking three and a half decades might know a little bit more about medical science in the human body than you. Maybe. Even though he's not credentialed, just putting that out there. He's been surrounded by some of the finest medical professionals uh, in the fucking world for, for what? Since 2005? So he's only been getting their advice on things like the human body for, you know, what, 19 years? But what the fuck does he know? Okay. I, I didn't. I only heard about it just in the Aaron Rodgers saying that he hoped that, or he, you know, if the list came out, or there's a lot of people that would hope the list wouldn't come out, including Jimmy Kimmel. And then I heard Jimmy Kimmel's response to it. I didn't realize that they had been poking at each other as long as they have been poking at each other. Yeah. And then, uh, and then this week Rogers came out and essentially gave a sorry, not sorry apology. And then now he's he's done on the show for the season. Okay. Yeah, McAfee pretty much came out today and said yeah, he's he, he's done for the season. He won't be back. Which it's like uh, the regular season's over anyways. <laughs> you, you got your playoff week out of him. Like you're only really losing three weeks anyway. But I, <laughs> but did that was my because the other night. Jimmy Kimmel starts teeing off on Aaron Rodgers. He's like, oh, you, uh, 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 talks about his semester at community college and his three semesters at Cal. Uh, meanwhile, Jimmy Kimmel went to Arizona State and, yeah. and then did fart jokes on the radio for the next fucking 10 years till he was able to do fart jokes on TV. Jimmy Kimmel really thinks highly of himself. I know. Doesn't he? I used to really <laughs> like him, and in the last decade, it's like it's you know why? Because he's in the fucking cool kids club now. And once you get in that cool kids club in Hollywood, oh, you can't fucking oh, you can't get same thing. The same thing happened with Howard Stern, man. Yep, say, exactly. Howard Stern is now kissing the asses of people that you can go back and find him. You can find video and audio of him talking shit about these people. 
And now he is kissing their ass. Yeah. Once you get in that cool kids club, man, it's 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 like high school never ends. <laughs> Ain't that the goddamn fucking truth? Jesus Christ. I got some life ex- recent life experience that backs that up. <laughs> right? <laughs> it's some people never get out of that headspace, man. Yeah. And I was never in that that high school headspace where I only hung with my clique. I was the 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 dude who traveled between the tribes as they put it in SLC punk. Mm-hmm. Right? I hung out with metalheads, with punk rockers, with fucking nerds because I played Music, I played video games, I played sports, I played uh, role playing games. I was, you know, Who are you fucking Ferris Bueller? reading. Yeah, kind of. I feel, kinda. I feel yeah, like we Bueller. should have that chick reading the list of all the kids who like Ferris Bueller. <laughs> but I mean, I'm just saying, like, I was, I never had that attitude. Like, like, all the cool kids were either I had nothing but contempt for, or they dropped that bullshit when I was around. And it wasn't like that between me and them. I knew kids like that. I wasn't one of those kids. I was squarely in my camp, and I was fine with it. But no, I knew. I definitely. I had. I had friends like that. I think one of my best friends was like that in middle school. He was. He. he yeah. Ironically, still my friend today. Talk to him every day. But he did that. Like he was able to do that. Just, there's. There's just some people who are able to do that. I was not one of those people. But well, it, I mean, uh, but what I'm, my point is, yeah. is that I, I, high school wasn't what high school was for most people for me, because I also went to like five different high schools in two different states. So, you know, like, come on now. I mean, that's that's that right there sets me apart from most people. And then I'm having a vastly different high school experience than most people in this in this country. Mm-hmm. And but I mean, like the mentality that, that it's still that way. It's the outgroup. It's pathetic to watch fucking adults create groups just to exclude other adults. Right. Isn't that what award shows are? <laughs> and that's why I've been saying for 10 years on this fucking network, yeah, we talk about the fucking Grammys or whatever, Oscars, but honestly, I think it's dumb as fuck giving away awards for fucking art. What's it what just- I consider great, another person considers trash. How can we agree on what is objectively the best? The technical side of filmmaking or music making? Yes, there is. There are clear-cut, better-sounding, better-looking techniques you could use and shit like that. But ultimately, who's to say the four chords that that Pearl Jam put together is better than the four chords that Billie Eilish put together? Right. I mean, let's just call it what it is, too, right? Whatever they all are. It's just an industry sucking its own dick for a night. Yeah, it's it's like middling bureaucracy creating problems to to justify and rationalize their own existence because they have no fucking rationalization or justification for their existence it's, it's really it's look how special we are we're special because we say we are we're special because we're going to take pictures of ourselves make people walk down this red carpet we're gonna make a big deal about it and most people just go oh yeah look at all these special people doing all these special things and just like the song says when the smoking cameras disappear, they're just people like you and me. This is the real world. I'll tell you, the the last few years has made me like Aaron Rodgers even more. Uh, I mean, and to, being a, you know, he's a division rival, so it hurts to say. But, I mean, he is in a position of notoriety where it definitely going against, you know, the cool crowd could get you in some shit. And he's done it, and he is like, you know, he's drank his ayahuasca and put his mingle f- middle fingers up the whole time and been like, fuck off. Like, I liked how during COVID, he was asking questions. Yes. I you know, all like that. I, I, heard, I heard something probably about four or five months ago. And it's just, it's one of those sayings that I'd never really heard before, but I'm sure it's been, been out there. But it's the whole, anytime someone tries to discourage you from asking questions to clarify a situation... You can be pretty sure they're trying to fuck you over. And I don't know of any teacher that I ever had that was worth a fuck. I don't know of any instructor I ever had that was worth a fuck who would try to muddy the waters and make a complicated situation even more complicated with just being ambiguous. And Do you know the mark of a good leader? Well, one of the marks of a good le- doesn't matter in any any industry any walk of life and this will be the last thing out of their mouth after they give you an instruction do you have any questions mm-hmm. so yeah that ex- i know exactly what you're saying rich 
If you are not, and it's always it's always the people trying to discourage questions that are the ones who are the most destructive to the overall fucking goal you're trying to accomplish. And I mean, it. This is any. This could be a job. This could be politics. I, I I remember four years ago very well, very well. I remember at people asking what I thought were banal, innocent questions and being shouted down and told to shut the fuck up. You're killing grandma. We had a co-host who wanted to withhold money from people as far as their tax returns or any type of fucking government, whatever that you know handout we were all getting until they got fully vaccinated. Yeah, that might have been me. I might have been on that train for a second. So, I mean, like... Jimmy just, Kimmel was. Do you remember saying. him and his whole little, uh, uh, how to, the hospitals are filling up, and how do we, do we may have to start making the hard decision about who to treat and who not to treat, and he's like, I don't think it's that hard. Seems pretty easy to me, vaccinated, oh, and having a heart attack. Oh, Jimmy Kimmel and Howard Stern both had that opinion. Is, yeah, if you're mm-hmm. unvaccinated, you shouldn't get a bed. That is so fucked up. Right? That that's that's the that's the that's that's the party of the people, everybody. That I don't I don't know if I've gone on this rant on here. I've gone on this rant a lot, so it's a little blurred. But if you go back and you watch like the compilation videos of all the shit that was said to unvaccinated people during that time, like mid to end 2021 holy shit it's like something out of a dystopian movie the president saying our patience is running thin people saying fuck your freedom like our patience is running thin don't forget he don't forget you people that was in there yeah, our patience is running thin with you people. It's incredible. It is incredible, and it blows my mind. And people, I mean, I think that might be part of the reason that I'm more of the camp that I don't know that we're going to see any sort of large uprisings if anything happens, because that was 20% of the United States that these people were talking to, you know? And they were being told, fuck you. They were being told, I don't fucking care about your freedom. They were being told, do this or you're going to be, you don't deserve a hospital bed if you're dying. Rest in peace, Wheezy. They were being told our patience is running thin. And they just got more, like, there were some people who tried to be loud about it, but it wasn't 20% of people. I don't know. This is the same country, though, that's willing to discount uh, if you believe the numbers of the last election. There you go. There you go. There you go, everybody. I now have one foot in that camp, thanks to recent events, uh, that are willing to just tell 74 million people, hey, fuck you, you're a piece of shit. Which, by the way, that, that goes on both sides, by the way. So, I mean, that'll be fun. And I brought it up last week. If half, if 74 million of those people are told, hey, who you want to vote for? Nah, we don't want... Th- I think that will stir some shit. Like, we know we tell you your vote counts, but here's the thing. <laughs> Turns out, not really. Like, <laughs> if that happens, like, look out. Because remember, according to the numbers we were told... Record turnout in the in in the last election, right? 150 million people voted. Yeah. And you're going to tell half of them they can't vote for who they want to vote for? Have fun with that. Remember, they got all the guns. I mean, we'll see. But it it anyway, back to the yeah. whole just the vaccine shit and the way that the way that people who chose to not be vaccinated were talked to was just, it was just insane to me. And I probably said some shit too back at the beginning when we didn't know anything and we were all scared. Trust me, I, I'll cop to probably saying some of it. But here's the thing uh, plenty of examples for all three of us over the course of this show and whatever iteration it has been in, uh, our opinions tend to evolve when we gain more information. Right. It's crazy. Right. Okay. But like here is uh, Jimmy Kimmel demanding that Aaron Rodgers apologize. Right. Where's his apology? Yeah. And you know what pisses me off? <laughs> All these, none of these apologies are real. Mm-hmm. And they know it. They know they're demanding fake apologies. It's all posturing and grandstanding. It's all it is. None of these people have any backbone or fucking honor in these fucking industries. Like, like seriously. Even fucking, even Aaron Rodgers is going to hand this off 
to somebody he pays to write some bullshit oh, did apology. You he- did you hear? I feel maybe Bill Burr maybe wrote a part of it because it was like a sorry, not sorry. Like, I'm paraphrasing Aaron Rodgers, but part of it is like, if you think I would be dumb enough to actually say that publicly, you're dumb. Like, if you think that I would, ins- like, if you think that I would insinuate publicly that you're a pedophile, you're a fucking idiot. Again, I'm paraphrasing Aaron Rodgers, but that that was that was part of the, that was the tone of part of his apology. Yeah, well, I mean, I get it, but still, I'm just saying, like. I, it's just bullshit posturing. Like seriously, like 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 four years you're lobbing fucking insults back and forth. Now you're gonna fucking pull out the oh you've crossed the line. But to me the other part is you've been a comedian for like three decades. You've never had no one's ever shot some shit back at you. Like I don't know, but I guess too. I guess uh, I guess comedians can be like that because it's I I think we've talked about it before. Jeff Ross. I guess is notoriously thin skinned. Like the guy who can just go and just roast an entire room for like two hours. Like you send one back his way. He's like, hey, man. Well, that's why what, you gotta be mean. That's what, like, if you go back and, and watch any of those fucking or listen to any of those Opie and Anthony episodes with, you know, back in the day, back in the 2000s, talking about the late 90s, early 2000s comedy scene in New York. Really, all, the comedians who have dominated the last 20 years were all the guys who were vicious with each other. They'd go to the comedy store, they they go downstairs, they'd sit at their fucking comedian's table, and they would just rip each other apart. Oh, I've and, heard those the stories. For, you've heard them from the Patrice standpoint? Yep. I've heard them from the Bill Burr standpoint. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and Bill Burr had one of the best lines ever. He's like, and we'd all be sitting at the table talking shit. You'd be having a good night. You'd be just getting some good ones off. And then all of a sudden, you'd see that fat motherfucker coming down the stairs. You'd be like, oh, shit, daddy's home. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because like, if you were wearing the wrong shirt, it was over with. It was over with. He wasn't going to let you get away with that shit. And it's just like, yeah. I mean, that's... Did he ever tell... Steel is, steel is forged by fire. Have you ever and heard the story of- about when he they got they caught wind of he took a gig on a, a bus? It was... I vaguely remember that, yes. Yeah, it was supposed to be like to... Uh, he ended up not doing the gig, but it didn't matter. Because they just... they found, Actually, he said he took it so bad in that room because of that, he passed the gig off to somebody. He gave the gig to Steve Byrne. <laughs> <laughs> But <clears throat> yeah, I, it, 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 comedians these days, too many of them, they're not tested like that. They're not put through fucking. They're not put through basically comedy boot camp to where you have to fucking sink or swim on your with your own wits. And it shows because we have a bunch of toothless comedy that's obsessing with where we're punching instead of being funny. Yeah, like, what I loved about Kimmel, at least until 2016, hmm, it's crazy what happened that year. He like. Granted, he you know he he corporatified himself over the years, but he always held to his 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 shtick. He always had the same kind of humor. You know, people tried to change him, and he always I mean it was dick and fart jokes. But still, I mean he was he had his style and he stuck to it. And then all of a sudden, in like twenty, like I said, it's just maybe just the way society's been blowing. Yeah, it's been. Yeah, for 10 years, it, it, it has been just a, a crazy, mad shift to the left for him. I mean, and Colbert did it too. When Colbert's show first came on, the first year, I watched it every fucking night. I loved it. And after, you know, and then once, uh, maybe six months into the election cycle, I was like, I cannot take this anymore. It is Donald Trump every night. Are you going to talk about comedy? Are you going to be a comedian ever again? Or was this now a politics show? Like, even Adam Carolla, his boy, Jimmy Kimmel's boy, has said on his show, hey, I remember when Jimmy used to be a comedian. Good. Someone needs to say this shit, because he ain't... Dude, he, I, he ain't been funny in a long, long time, dude. I actually think the quote was, I remember when Jimmy used to tell jokes. Still. Yeah. But it's just... To correct my quote, I found the Biden quote from the speech. So it was, we've been patient, but our patience is wearing thin, and your refusal has cost us all. So please do the right thing. Don't take it from me. Listen to the voices of the unvaccinated Americans who are lying in hospital beds, taking their final breaths, saying, if I had only gotten vaccinated, if only. 
And here's where I say what my, my favorite thing to read online from anybody who is even center left is that's never happened ever in the history of ever. Mm-hmm. <laughs> because they just anything that they don't like, that's never happened ever. You're making that up. That's bullshit. Yeah. It's never happened. Like, and no matter how much proof you have to the counter, they don't care. They just keep repeating that mantra as if it's going to make it reality for them. What was the big quote in the summer of 2020 that was in all the news stories? I thought it was a hoax. That was a lot of people's last words. Mm-hmm. Yep. No, it wasn't. Nope. That's all just a bunch of bullshit. No. Oh. These are the same people that would show you a picture of somebody 300 pounds. This perfectly healthy person died of COVID. Perfectly healthy. So before COVID, mm-hmm. their doctor would call them perfectly healthy. I'm telling you, that's the, that's the shit that blew my mind. That's where I was like, okay, I'm off the fucking, I'm, I, I, I'm off the train. I can't. I can't with this shit. Like, you're just going to look me dead in the face and tell me I'm 300 plus fucking pounds at that point. I know what the fuck my health condition is. You're telling me someone older than me, heavier than me? More wear and tear in their body. They're perfectly healthy. Get the fuck out of here. And fine. Get the fuck out of here. And for all the syntax warriors out there, maybe the phrase perfectly healthy wasn't used. Maybe the phrase uh, no pre-existing conditions wasn't used. I will still call bullshit. Yeah. (laughs) If you are 350 pounds. You are a walking pre-existing. That's a pre-existing condition. Yeah. Yes. Okay. I mean, I sorry. I was that. I know. I speak from experience. Oh, you God are goodness. you are you are pre diabetic. You are hypertensive, at least. At least, I'll give you the bare minimum. Those are two things you you have going on. I guarantee it. And here's what people really don't sit down and think about. Okay, take all the bullshit that could happen from diabetes or hypertension or whatever the fuck, and just look at the stress, strain, and wear and tear on your joints. And think about that. Because here's the scariest part about me losing weight. I can touch my stomach, and it's rock fucking hard. And I'm like, oh, yeah, because I was carrying around all that weight. And if my core muscles weren't fucking rock hard, I wasn't going to be able to do it. And uh, uh, sorry, I am I'm, got off on it. But the point, the point is, is that like you don't even un- understand how much putting that much weight on your body changes your body until you've lived with it for a few years. And then the the curtain is definitely pulled back when you start losing the weight. Because, dude, I'm going to be honest with you, I had to almost kind of like, like my, my walking gait has changed since I've lost weight. I walk differently. Yeah, you probably move quicker. But like, people don't, like, no one ever fucking talks about that. No one ever tells you that, oh, yeah, this type of shit could happen. Like, everyone always just heart attack, stroke, diabetes, blah, 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 blah. Horror, 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 shock, 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 horrible, horrible. Okay, yeah, yeah, well, that's all horrible, but it's going to be a lot of other shit that's going to add up to a death by a thousand cuts that's going to really fucking make your life unbearable before the big shit really starts taking chunks out of you. That's just my experience, so there. Thank you for coming to my TED Talk. I'll get off the soapbox now. Nothing you said is wrong. No. But it doesn't matter, man. People don't want to hear the truth. The older I get, the more I... And and every time I slip back into maybe, maybe it's not this way, I am smacked by reality in the face. No, this is... People are happy to live lies. They are very happy to live lies. I can't do anything with those people. So, right. So, but yeah, I just, this whole, I just wondering if you guys were following this just because I, I was just taken aback on just how my whole, what I took away from this is how soft Jimmy Kimmel is for somebody who's been slinging jokes at people for, you know, taking shots at people for 30 years. Like, really, man? Like, that's how you react? You put my family in danger. Like, mine, mine, that's it. Anytime anyone, prove it. It's my new standard for a wild accusation. Prove it. I want to see a police report. I want to see a phone record. You had to call 911. Well, then the, then the move is to refuse to do that and attack you for wanting proof. That's the move. So, I mean, I, <sighs> of course it is. I, People do it because it works, because there's a lot of stupid people in this world. I guess so. People wouldn't keep doing it if it didn't work, right? <laughs> well, dude, how much of this, how much of our fucking society is based about, uh, based solely on what about is? Well, this person got something that I don't think they should have because they didn't work hard enough for it. So I'm pissed. Fuck them. 
I want them to be fucking punished for getting over on a system that I can't get over on. That's really what people get upset about. It ain't about fucking any of the other bullshit for the most part. It's people get pissy when other people get something that they didn't work as hard as they have for what they have. That's all. Yeah. Uh, Isn't that called envy? Yeah. I mean, I, I, and to me, it's just like, I okay, weren't we taught as children not to be that way? Allegedly. But that comes from religion. And religion is bad. Well, not unless you're the right religion. But that's opening up a whole other conversation. I think that was more linked to the conversation we started out the show with, really. <laughs> but I digress. But well, even that, dude, even, even the fucking shit with Israel and all this, we've talked about it before. I just sit here and I, I, I go, queers for Palestine? Right. Do you understand how fucking retarded that is? <laughs> Do you understand that you are basically, if you walk into Palestine and start sashaying around being all swishy and switchy with it you're basically fucking committing suicide yeah you know what uh the i you know what palestine's idea of the organization of course for palestine is a pile of dead gay people but it's because it's become a political issue and if you're on the left you have to support Palestine. You have to be, you have to support the LGBT alphabet community. You have to support blah 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 blah. And if you support Israel, then you're a conservative or you're a Christian or you're right wing, whatever the fuck. And I just uh, we've talked about it. I'm like I don't give a fuck, dude. I've been bitching about it for ten years. Why do I have to check all the boxes on one side? Why can't I check this box over here, this box over here, this box over here, or this box over here? Why is it all or nothing? And uh, congratulations, you've turned me into all or nothing because, quite honestly, everything over on the like, it's it, it, we've kind of been beating this drum for ten years too. What's in it for me over there? I'm a middle-aged, middle-class white male. What's in it for me over on the left side? But you notice, see, this is uh, this is why this was never this was destined to fail. This fucking social experiment that started with the tail end of Gen X and has just gotten worse and worse with every fucking subsequent generation. You can... Oh, God. I don't, whatever. I'm not even going to go down this fucking road. It's just... It'll derail a podcast. What's the, next, what's the next topic we got? Thank you for visiting ChristopherMedia.net. Thank you for visiting ChristopherMedia.net. Yeah, I didn't know we had a rail we were on. Uh, we have Hunter Biden walking out of the congressional hearing today. Why'd he walk out? Uh, because Marjorie Taylor Greene started talking. As soon as the time got yielded to her, he tapped his lawyer, stood up, and walked out where he was met with reporters and asked questions such as, what's your favorite kind of crack? <laughs> Who's that reporter work for? I'm going to guess <laughs> not a major news network. Let's see. It used to be Howard Stern's guy. Now we now we know Benji. it's just some fucking. Now it's just some right wing fucking media outlet. At least that's what it'll be called. It, even right, if it's not yeah. true, it's going to be right. Even if it's just fucking apolitical and just wanting to shit on as many people as possible, it's still going to be called right wing. <laughs> right? Yeah, Benji screaming, "Are you more than seven inches now?" Would be like, "Oh, that right winger Howard Stern." Or, yeah, was or, yeah, yeah. Weiner was a, a Democrat. Yeah. yeah, it doesn't say who they were, like who asked the question. A lot of crack questions were asked. <laughs> Are you on crack today? <laughs> what kind of crack do you normally smoke, Mr. Biden? Tell me the best spot in D.C. to score rocks. Yeah. <laughs> Wherever Marion Barry's at. But, like, R.I.P. How? Nobody, got, nobody got that, right? I said R.I.P. How can he just walk out of a congressional here? He's the fucking president's son. That's the that's that's the real answer. Because he's the right president's son. No, I think if you're any president's son, you can probably do what you want with impunity within reason. You think if Donald Trump Jr. had walked out, there wouldn't have been a massive problem? I think the media would bellyache about it, but I think he would have gotten his car and went home like Hunter did. He's the president's son. Unless he... Uh, unless he wildly, you know, unless he fired off a gun before he said, fuck this, and fired off one into the air before he left. I, yeah, you think he'd get in his car and he'd go home. Mm. I think if you get to a certain level of power, like, it, all bets are off. Like, you don't think we'll find out stuff in the future about, you don't think there was any funny business when Trump was in the White House with him and his kids? 
Especially with his fucking his his daughter's fucking husband was uh part of his cabinet. I just don't think. I think that there'd be a much bigger deal. I think that all of this stuff, if it was happening to anyone else, it would be much more cut and dry than being flown around on White House planes and being told, I'm not showing up for the meetings, for the, what was it he didn't show up for? Where he said he's not doing the closed. Well, I think what you're getting into really is, oh, I think any, that, what, what you're getting into is correct. I think the way the media is treating this is, that, yeah, I think anything with their boy's son is, yeah, no big deal. Like, it's downplayed and it's out of the news cycle in, like, fucking, you know, 12 hours. Come on. They they got they literally got caught doing it with the fucking laptop story in October 2020. Mm-hmm. So we know as far as the 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 way the scribes go... They're they're definitely that's their that's their boy's boy. They're playing it close to the vest, whatever 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 other metaphor you need. Yeah, it's bullshit. The press isn't supposed to be on a team, but that is that's done. That's over. That's dead. Body isn't even warm on that. It's been dead for a while. Yeah, we're, we're in decaying mode now. You might even be seeing bone. Frustrating. But just so just because MTG was gonna speak. He's like, all right, I'm out of here. What did did, what yeah. did she ask? Did she get to speak? No. No, the time was yielded to her, and that was it. That was, He tapped the lawyer's arm, stood up, walked out. I mean, if way to give her the power, though. Like, oh, yeah? <laughs> I just dominated you without even saying a word. It's just, it's just so much political theater. I am so tired of all of it. I'm so tired of all of it. But you understand why they do it, because we're sitting here talking about it. Yeah. And so is everybody else. It works. It does. You right. I mean, that's it. it, it <sighs> some point you got to look in the mirror and be like, OK, how am I contributing to, to, to this level of bullshittery and fuckery that, that we experience? And it's like, yeah, I mean, I, but here's the thing. Once you start to disengage from politics you you might you couldn't do this show. I'm talking about any of us. If any of us fucking checked out of politics completely, which is probably the healthiest thing for all three of us to do, to be honest with you, right. we couldn't do this show. We'd have to completely come up with a different fucking. The, the format would be different. Everything. And I mean, I know for me at least, I don't talk politics outside of this podcast unless Chris catches me during the week when we're passing like two shifts in the night, coming and going. And something political comes up. I, I just don't. I don't. I don't talk politics at work. I don't talk politics with strangers. And it's not because I don't want to offend anyone. Because if you know me, I don't give a fuck if I offend you. That's a you problem. You'll get over it. But I just don't want to fucking argue and fight with complete strangers over nothing. I can. Right. I can get strangers ready to fucking go blow for blow with me on my own. I don't need to add politics into the mix. But yeah, my energy's precious. I'm not wasting it on a stranger. I mean, but then I guess that goes to show that you know, here we are. We get on this show and we fucking spew our political venom and then get the fuck off and go about our, our lives for the next week. Is that yeah. what I mean it is is it is just a coping mechanism? Is just a, are we huffing the copium here? It's our opinion bukaki for the week. Blow up once a week. We'll see you next we'll see you next time. I'm not delusional enough to fucking think I'm changing anyone's mind. And I mean like I've asked people, I'm like, how many times have you been in a, an argument online in a comment section? Oh god, I don't know, thousands, thousands upon thousands. Okay. How many minds have you think you changed? And it's always like, oh, one or two. Really? Well, psh, you should quit your job and do that full time then cuz you're really good at that. I guess I just hope that Somebody just goes at one point with anything we say, huh, never thought of it that way. Not even hoping they change their mind. We make someone stop and go, never thought of, never thought of that. The amount of work people will put into not having to think is amazing to me. It's the same people who work five times as hard to not work at their job than if they just did their fucking job. Oh, those people. Yes, you know exactly who I'm talking or the about. People, or the people who try... Or put the same amount of effort into staying unemployed as they could into being employed. There you go. Like, dude, you spend like six hours a day trying to stay unemployed. You do realize that's kind of like be a job. You're getting compensated for the time that you're spending. But yeah, oh, it's 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 some people. Yeah, 
people view the world through different lenses, I guess. People just really think that their opinions matter. Well, to be fair, we're on at least one generation where they have been told, yeah, and put it out there. Like, that's part of what they do. Like, right? It's a, a Gen Z. I'm, I'm actually sticking up for you. You don't know any other way than to just shit out whatever you think into your thumbs. I man, I'll be honest with you though. I that ain't Gen Z that's doing that. Not that I see. Not in my day to day fucking travels. That is the younger millennials doing that. Motherfucking thirty three year old men talking about I have a strong TikTok presence. Are you serious, dude? Hey, Amen. Yeah, I mean, that's the people that do that shit. Like I, I'm dead serious. Like. I'm telling in my personal experience, anecdotal experience does not mean this is going to be your experience. It's just mine. Take it for what it is. They're more like us than, than they are millennials. There's a strong don't give a fuck. And I got to do whatever I got to do to survive. And that's not sorry. That sounds like Gen X way more than millennials or boomers. It does. <clears throat> so, I mean, I, and by the way, I am starting to see the, the uh, Internet hate machine ramp up for Gen Z. And I'm loving that it's all millennials, and I'm just like, boomers 2.0, saying the same shit about fucking Gen Z that, that the boomer said about us. As a millennial, I don't see many people talking shit about Gen Z, other than the language we can't stay caught up with. But most of that is literally us just saying we can't stay caught up with the language. Ah, uh -huh. you know what that, that means? You're getting old. That's what, You start seeing articles like that, it's over. You're done. That means you are aging out of being considered young. Welcome. Welcome to the dark side. We have cookies. <laughs> Five or one cookies. Practical. No, I knew when I, old moments. No, ten years ago I knew when I started reading articles about on fleek and whatever the hell else you guys are fucking saying ten years ago, I was like, Oh and here we are. I don't know what any of this shit says. This is about what twenty somethings are saying. And we're here. But that is the only that's the only hate I see towards anyone. Oh, Gen I don't ex I don't ex <laughs> the millennials, the the duplicious millennials. I, I you expect me to take what they're saying at fucking face value? No, it's all passive aggressive. Oh, these are just memes. These are just jokes. No, they're not. They're not. Okay. I I like you don't see it, that's cool. I'm just saying the shit I see, the shit I read. I know some of these people well enough to know their per well. I know their personas online well enough to know they're not joking. And it's just, I, hey, guess what? You're human. You're like every other generation. Now, do you get it? You never were special. You've been lied to. Don't be mad at us. Be mad at who lied to you. That's how I feel about millennials these days. You, you guys should be starting to get it across the board as a generation. Oh, we got lied to big time. Yep. Yeah. I mean, when there's 8 billion of us, how fucking special do you think you are? Dude, I mean, I feel pretty special. I mean, the Earth is an organism, and we're a fucking... Uh, we're, like, we're, we're like fucking mold growing on bread. If you really want to get all fucking existential about it. At least the weed I'm smoking over here. But in re like, yeah, we're like fucking moss on a rock. The fuck it's the fact that we want to fucking hand out... Uh, like, basically, we just want... We, everybody... Is amazing. No, everybody's not. There are a lot of boring cunts in the fucking world. Yeah, here's the truth. There's a few standouts, a lot of fucking people in the middle, and a few losers. Like it's, 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 it's the end. Most of us end up just being really fucking average. See, I I, I do wonder this, okay? Because <clears throat> the uh, <laughs> my career path make me make me sound like an adult when I say it like that. Uh, I'm, I'm, I deal with schools a lot, but it's more public schools than private schools. But I see a lot of the, you're special, everyone's a leader, everyone's this, everyone that, like in the hallways, I'm like the little blurb boards and shit they have. And I'm just going, you understand that this is, that's not possible. If everyone's a leader, no one's a follower, who are you leading? Wait, idea. We take these well, my posters. Point is, are, is, it, is it this way in private schools? Are they lying to kids like this in private schools? Or are they just giving Dude, them a decent education and kicking them out the door? You know what they just did at my nephew's school? I went to this school. Uh, what did you guys grow up with an A being? Like the, the grade scale for an A. Between what and what percentage? 94. 90 
Oh, what was that? For an A? Yeah, 94 to 100. Okay, you, so you went to private school? No, that was public. Oh, well, Rich. Was, a was like what, 90 to 100? Yeah. B was like 80 to 89. C was, you know, some, yeah. some it, give it just, or take. Yeah, it went up the, the it, went to, it went in tens, right? It went in percentage, you know, just, you know, yeah. 80s was a C, 70s, or 80s was a B, 70s was a C, 60s was a D. 59 or lower F. Uh, well, yeah, well, I was, the school I went to, yeah, I went until fifth grade. It was 93 to 100 was an A. These motherfuckers, just 95 to 100 is an A at the school now. They aren't fucking really? around. Is this a private school? Hell yeah, it is. That's what I, okay, but that's what I'm getting at. Because I just can't believe private schools are, are filling their fucking their students heads with this bullshit no they work harder so the public school where most people send their kids which by the way i just want to point something out public school was never supposed to be your first option for educating your children it was supposed to be if you have no one else to educate your children you can't do it or you can't send them to a to a better school well here's the social safety net here's the bare minimum and somehow we've convinced people that a high school education for the public school is like, you know, well, I mean, not so much now, but when we were growing up, it was, oh, you have to have, really? You got people graduating high school right now who can't read past the third grade level. That is accurate. What, what is the point of a high school diploma if you cannot read past a third grade level? Which is a problem because up until probably fucking about the last 10, 15 years, most newspapers and, and news outlets were written at the sixth grade level. I'm just pointing that out for you. I mean, I'm sure that we've, I'm sure we've dropped to like kindergarten level with the, with the amount of fucking bullshit that gets posted online these days. But here's a tidbit. The high school I graduated from made national news in the seventies for graduating high school seniors who couldn't read. Why? <laughs> Because they were good at football. See, now they don't even have that. Now they have social promotion. But you're too old to stay back. So just send them with, his, with, with the other people. We don't want Billy to get left behind emotionally. <laughs> <laughs> I feel that's it, your reaction it, a lot, Jess. It's, yeah. <laughs> it's all just tiring. I, I have family who has taught in the public school system. And holding a kid back back in the public school system outside i think once you go beyond the third grade is essentially an act of congress and i know that the high school that i went to um that i'm sure they had ieps then the individual education plans um i'm sure they had those then but now everyone because it's so easy to get a diagnosis of autism, ADHD, we can just go ahead and call it LD. You have a learning disorder, LD, blanket statement, uh, dyslexia, apraxia, any of these things. When you have, parents are doing that and they're getting these kids IEPs. And I think that IEPs are wonderful when they're used appropriately. Because if you have a kid who understands the material, but they really are dyslexic and they just need help getting that material from their brain to the paper. Okay, let's make some accommodations. We have a doctor who says they need this. They need to be worked on through this. Absolutely. They shouldn't be repeatedly held back or, I mean, I, I don't think kids get bailed out anymore, but I think, it, I think it's a wonderful thing used appropriately. Like most things, this is no longer used appropriately. And I don't know if this is the same in every state, but I know in my state, if you have an IEP, if you have an individual education plan in public school, I don't know if this applies to private school, that they can not, not only hold you back, they can recommend that you be held back, but the parent can veto that and they can not fail you. They cannot do it. I'm sure that'll work out well in a few years. Well, I mean, it's been like this for years the the said family member that i had in school or in teaching uh left they couldn't deal with it I can tell you. and go ahead sorry oh i mean who would who the hell would want to the thing is is like kids are 
smart and they figure this shit out. They're going to know I can't be failed. Why would I try? I'm not going to do this shit. I don't want to. I got, I know a couple people who have kids on these IEPs as well as, and, and I can tell you both of their parents will admit this kid should not be in the grade that they're in. And between that and the schools going, uh, oh, uh, because of COVID, yeah, they, they, they won't hold them back. Mm-hmm. And both of these sets of parents are pissed. They actually, they're like, that's cool. You keep passing my kid. However, here's what I'm seeing at home. Here's what's not happening. Mm-hmm. 4,000% yes. And it's, I don't, I don't know if it's the same in your state. I really don't. But I do know here it's because you can not, you can not fail a kid. And hold a kid back on an IEP. See, I have a family member who he was a, he was a uh, I won't go so far as to say change a life baby, but his parents were of an advanced age. We'll put it that way when he was born and got divorced when he was rather young. And so it's just his mom's older, older woman trying to keep up with the kid. And this kid is just smart enough, just clever enough, I guess you should say, or he He's not a kid anymore, but he was when he did it. To basically work the system and get one of those IEPs to where he literally, from middle school on, never once set foot in a classroom, still graduated. Mm-hmm. I don't know that he knows anything, but he literally worked the system to where he could just stay at home, take open book tests online, and just ace everything across the board. And I mean, like, basically got caught at some point, and his his mother had a talking to from somebody and they were like, you know, you got to do something about this. And she's like, I don't, I don't know. He's on that computer all day. He knows that he knows how to do, I don't know. I don't know how to do anything on that thing. And I'm just like, wow. Okay. Now that's an example of one motivated shitty kid and how he can fucking abuse the system to get what he wants out of. It. Not saying that's across the board, but I'm just saying, obviously the, the, the ability to abuse the system is there. So I'm agreeing with you 100% when you're like, oh yeah, it's, it, it if used properly, it could be a good tool in your toolbox. But I can tell you from firsthand experience, it would that yeah, it was not that way for for this this family member of mine. Mm-hmm. It was more he's making the right note. It's like when you talk to HR. We've had these conversations, Chris. You say you say certain phrases and shit, and that basically fucking okay, that gets the ball rolling. He was he knows he knows what to say to the to the school counselor. And he knows how to fucking play up and to play certain uh, traits in, that he has up and play down certain traits so he could get what he wanted. And he got exactly what he wanted. So, I mean, I, I guess in a roundabout way, he did kind of learn how to navigate life in the real world because shit, that's how most people get ahead, right? <laughs> they fuck over other people. <laughs> Do some, bre- Bend the rules, break the rules, some shit like that. Make the system work for them. Yeah, yeah that's a polite way of putting it. I'm working on my diplomacy lately. <laughs> All right. Uh, what else do we have? Or is that it? We went through shit that I didn't know we had. It was a, I don't know if we're just like, it, it's a lot to talk about if you look at just like the ma- macro of everything, you know? But it's all stuff outside of the, the ju- juice in New York and the tunnels. It's all stuff that we've talked about before, just new little tidbits you know fair enough no farting this week no farting did you guys i just want to bring this up this because it's really just something stupid just going to show that disney and lucasfilm is still acting like they're allergic to money did you hear about their I, i'm gonna fuck this broad's name up uh charmine obeyed chinoy i think it's i think obeyed is how you say that uh she's going to be She's a Pakistani Canadian filmmaker, and she's going to direct the next Star Wars movie that's going to star Ray from the last trilogy, the character that pretty much everyone was like, yeah, it's pretty much garbage. Now they're going to base a whole new trilogy around her. And this female director come out and said, I enjoy making men comfort- uncomfortable and how she's going to enjoy guiding Star Wars because men have been doing it too long. Well, this is going to go well. I, dude, I, I'm not even saying there's there's two fucking Americas anymore. There's half a dozen to a couple dozen probably Americas. And in, in Hollywood, this makes perfect sense to them. 
outside of Hollywood, I don't know one person who's like, yeah, that's a good fucking business plan. Yeah. Piss off your entire customer base. Yeah, that's a great idea. Like, don't call them fans. Call them customers. That's what they are. They pay you money for your product. Put it that way. That's what you intend on doing. Sounds like a solid plan to drive a once storied franchise into the fucking further into the fucking toilet dude i can't even uh, i think book of boba fett the slow speed speeder chase bike chase or the vespa scooter slow speed vespa scooter chase in book of boba fett's where i was like i'm done i haven't watched anything star wars that's come out since then that's been a couple of years now i think like i just don't care dude i grew up worshiping star wars my entire room was decked out in star wars shit like i i saw every star wars movie up till did the disney movies in the theater almost all of them on the first fucking day that they they opened and i just i i can't i do not give a single fuck about star wars anymore and i just being honest a lot of it is being told yeah we don't want you 40 40 year old white male we don't need you oh okay bye i'll spend my money on people who don't hate me at least at least if they do they're intelligent enough to keep it to them fucking selves but like i said in 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 the america that hollywood exists in this makes sense to them this is a good marketing plan this is going to put asses in the seats even though disney took a bath last year on just layups and slam dunks they should have just been making bank on. It's like Taylor Swift going, you know what? I'm going to start doing death metal. <laughs> Her manager would go, the hell you are. <laughs> I really, the older I get and the more I fucking walk around the world, I'm like, is it just fucking retardation mixed with hubris? Is that what it is? Everybody's going to, like I said, it's, everyone's going to got to settle somebody's hash over something. Like, I don't, why, everyone's got to be a fucking hero. They want to, fucking change the fucking world like it's a, sorry most people are you're gonna be just the average fucking person who if you're lucky lives seven and a half decades and that's it you're gonna have your little friends and your little family and you're gonna do whatever you're gonna do and that's it and your existence ain't gonna mean shit but to you and the people that were in your little fucking sphere while you were around. That is going to be most of our existence. And everyone, like, especially in the United States, is just on this kick in, like, the last decade. So they're going to fucking change the world. Fucking not. I always think it's funny when it's the people that, you know, like, act like they're going to change the world. It's like, I, just wondering, your life must be perfect then, right? Like, if you are so obsessed where you're going to go out, you're going to dig up people's personal information, you're going to fucking ruin people's fucking lives because they expressed an opinion that you disagree with online. You're going to go do all that. Your life must be fucking free of any bullshit, right? Oh, that's the first place I go to when I see people like that. Like, all right, so everything's all good with you? Like, since you're telling everyone how to live, let's... Uh, hey, share, this, share the secret sauce with all of us. We're out here fucking around, running into each other, like fucking, you know, we're all wearing blindfolds in the dark. Hey, fucking, why don't you... You got it all figured out? Let us, you could be a very rich person. Share us your secrets. But people don't want to hear that shit. That's a great note to end the show. I was say, that's so optimistic. We, we do do children's parties. <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, nothing. Yeah. At, at Gen Exhausted Pod on social media. Uh, ChristopherMedia.net is, has the PayPal button if you'd like to help us out. And if you have the ability to rate and review the show, uh, please do. Helps other people find the show. Make that your New Year's resolution that everyone's going to bail. Uh, at the time this posted, most people have probably already bailed on their New Year's resolution. If you've already have, make another, make another one. Help another listener find this show. And you can do that by rating and reviewing the show. Please. And thank you. I appreciate you listening, and we'll catch you next week. Later, guys. See ya. Every day I get up and pray to John. And he increases the number of clocks by exactly one. Everybody's coming home for lunch these days. Last night there were skinheads on my lawn.
got big lanes. Got big lanes. Got big lanes. Some people say that bowling alleys all look the same. Look the same. Look the same. There's not a line that goes here that rhymes with anything. 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 Had a dream last night, but I forget what it was. What it was. Thank you for visiting ChristopherMedia.net.